I don't believe it. I, I haven't heard that much applause since Melvin Laird accidentally sat on a model of the ABM. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Pardon me, I choked on some coffee coming out here, but I think I'm going to be all right. I, uh, I had a rough weekend. You know, the, have you ever done that? I entertained an old girlfriend over the weekend. She'll be 73 in August. <laughs> That's silly. Strangest things are in the paper today. Monday, you know, it's hard to find subjects, but uh, there's an article that music, scientists have learned, music makes plants grow faster. You probably read about that. Uh, there's a lesser known study that Rosengarten's drumming kills fungus, but that's a whole <laughs> other thing. But uh, isn't that an interesting thing? I think that's an example of what they're calling today our distorted priorities. I mean, spending a lot of money and time figuring out what makes plants grow. While all over the world, human beings are going to bed short. <laughs> I uh, think it's ridiculous. But anyway, welcome to New York. This is the Big Apple, isn't it? Or the Big Dirty Apple, as it's coming to be called. So you'll be glad to know that the pollution index is no longer on unhealthy. It has moved back, I'm happy to report, to unsatisfactory. <laughs> isn't that wonderful? But don't worry if you're tourists uh, about things you hear. The subways, in spite of what you hear, are safer than they have been. That's because the muggers are afraid to ride in them or taking taxis. <laughs> it's, it's wonderful. Anyway, what else? Oh, by the way, I came in last night. There's one thing. I make a lot of jokes about New York. But when you come down that Hudson River Drive at night and you can see the lights and you can sense the excitement and you can smell the river, it's just... <laughs> The Hudson is un... A guy caught a fish that was too short, and it begged him not to throw it back. <laughs> now that's dirty. Oh, the Penn Central, by the way. Uh, they just tried out their fastest train over the weekend, their new fast train, and did pretty well. It, it was only beaten by a Bronx Cub Scout in a potato sack. <laughs> and, uh, you can tell a Penn Central train, because their emblem, they're very proud of it. It's in vivid colors. It's a turtle sneering. And, uh, <laughs> People are complaining a lot, though. They don't like to ride near the engine. In the first three cars in the Penn Central, it's distracting because you can hear the engine saying, I think I can, I think I can. <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> Sammy Kahn got married. Yes, Sammy Kahn, the composer. Famous com Isn't he a famous composer? The lyricist. Well, I... Oh, yeah, I, it's wrong to say, because he writes the words. Yeah. No, it's just the lyrics. <laughs> well, he writes the words and the lyrics. He wrote... Uh, it's interesting. It's his second marriage. He wrote Love is Lovelier the second time around. But he also wrote... <laughs> Wait a minute. Here's the funny part. He also wrote High Hopes and Call Me Irresponsible. <laughs> See, I tell you when the funny part is. Hey, that thing happened over the weekend where an actor in a stock theater did a line from another play. You know how when they're doing several plays at once? And they'd been doing Peter Pan in the afternoon. And in that night's performance... Uh, of another thing, he suddenly said the Tinkerbell death line. Everybody who believes in fairies, please clap, you know. And it nearly ruined the second act of The Boys in the Band. <laughs> <laughs> Say, Chet has left us. Chet Huntley. You know, it was his last... Uh, yeah, he finished... A, I thought that was interesting. It was a touching moment at the end of his last show where uh, David Brinkley said, Good night, Chet. And he said, It's my last night. <laughs> thought that was... Well, wouldn't you do that on your life? No, he didn't. He didn't really do it. Hey, the answer to the thing we've all worried about, a 747 can land in Cuba. <laughs> Did you see that? A hijacked 747? And Castro, this is true, you know, he, saw, he came down and looked at the plane and was very impressed, he said, with it, which is no wonder. I mean, it actually, it has three more bathrooms than Cuba. <laughs> Oh, one thing, and then I'm... A man has done a nice thing, and I think he deserves credit when this sort of thing is done. This, is, this was in Time magazine. I still have the essentials of it here. A nine-year-old gorilla in the Phoenix, Arizona Zoo, you probably read about this, needed a mate, and they had no way to get it there. Um, and the, it sounds like it's going to be one of those jokes, but it's not. The um, problem was solved by Hugh Hefner. He lent them his Playboy jet. Read about this? And they got the uh, zoo officials in Baltimore so that they could fly a male gorilla into uh, Phoenix where this where they needed it. So the people in Phoenix, if you see a pregnant gorilla, remember that Hugh Hefner is responsible.
Well, they didn't come out right. <laughs> Why don't we see how the show is? Uh, we have a show following this. Gloria Swanson is here, who says she has a surprise announcement to make, and Janis Joplin, who always does, and uh, <laughs> Mark Young actress Margot Kidder, and Dave Megacy, who's writing that book that pro football is a little frightened about that's going to come out sometime. I couldn't wait to hear about that, so he's going to be here. And now, here's where we show our appreciation for the monologue and move into the program. We'll be right back. Tonight, I would like to welcome station KJ-TV, Channel 17. That's in Bakersfield, California, which carries the show at 11.30. I have to go out there and see it. Monday through Friday. That's 11.30 uh, at night, not in the morning, of course. Hello, Bakersfield. Say, someone sent me this, which is sort of interesting. It's TV news. It's from the Chicago, uh, it's from Chicago paper, really. And it's uh, this, the Sunday uh, television magazine. <laughs> and um, there's an article about David Frost. And it's called The Year That Was for David Frost by Cynthia Lowry. And it's a very long article. And of course, when they print these articles, they always um, print the picture with them. And I thought you would like to see this picture because I know him, and I think this is probably one of the, this is a blow up of the page from the article, probably one of the best photographs of David that I've ever seen. <laughs> Can you see that? That's their actual page. I'm looking forward to the development of the 48 hour day, says peripatetic David Frost. <laughs> it's that wonderful climate in England that gives them that nice complexion like that. <laughs> anyway. I just thought I would do that. Thank you for people who sent that in. And uh, this is the Della Reese show. <laughs> 